Hey gang, Chris Maholka here. This is the number two video in my series on dubbing. In the first video, we show you how to take rabbit fur, a rabbit hide, and shave the fur off of it. This video, I'm gonna show you how to take that shaved rabbit fur, white, and we're gonna dye it. And we're gonna dye it to a nice uh, caddis orange today. So the things you'll need for dyeing any rabbit fur or any kind of fur feathers is some kind of a heat source. Electric hot plate works great. You can also use a barbecue grill if you want to do it outside. Need some kind of a container to heat your water and your dye bath in. Stainless steel is the best. You don't want to use aluminum or something that's going to rust or corrode because we're going to use a little salt and a little vinegar for our acid dye. The dyes I'm using are Jacquard acid dyes and you can get them from hardware stores or craft stores in small bottles like this and it cost you a few bucks, or you can get them in the larger pound containers. It's all the same dye, but again, it's the Jacquard acid dye, not the uh, Procyon. The Procyon works on things like cotton t-shirts and those types of things where the acid dyes work on natural proteins, feathers for hair. You're gonna need some kind of a measuring uh, spoons and recommend that you have a special set for doing this, not to use these again in the house. And some vinegar. This is the acid in the acid dyes. It's not as scary as it sounds. And also some salt. I use rock salt, sea salt. You don't want anodized salt like from your table. You want something that's uh, a natural, non-treated version. And rock salt like you get for ice cream making is great. Then you'll need something to stir. And this is actually a, a stirring stool, a tool for uh, photography and photography chemicals. Um, some type of a water measuring device and then for rinsing and drying uh, I use the plastic window screen material this works great for rinsing out the hair to get all the dye out without it going through and losing too much down the drain and this can be purchased at hardware stores anywhere that has window screenings that type of thing let's get started on this before you start your dye heating you want to degrease your rabbit fur, and even if it's bleached or tanned, there still can be a little bit of oil in it, which prevents the dye from getting into the fur. So we have just taken a container with water and shot enough Dawn dishwashing liquid into it, and this is the plain old blue Dawn you use in the kitchen, into it, stirred it. This is warm water, and we're gonna add some rabbit fur to that to degrease it. So I'm just gonna take my bag and grab a handful of this fur out of it and that's about the right amount just a, a wad and we're gonna put it in there and we're gonna get it degreasing so the dye will work more effectively the other thing it does by getting the dawn in there and breaking down any extra little fibers that might be on the rabbit fur or any extra little uh, oils is it helps the fur soak into the dye bath better and absorb it better. So once that's done, we're gonna set this aside for a few minutes and we'll rinse that out with clear water and get it ready for our dye bath. For a small container this size, we're gonna use a 16 ounces of water. So the first thing you wanna do is we're gonna dissolve our dye and our salt. So we're gonna pour just a little bit of water about a half an inch of water into the bottom of the pan. What we have to do first is take this dye and dissolve it. Dyes are made up of several different pigment colors and if you don't dissolve the dye in the water first you'll get sometimes off colors depending on how the fibers or the fur takes the dye bath, how it absorbs the dyes into the fiber. So we're going to start by adding a little bit of dye to our water. And for the amount we did, the handful of white rabbit, this dye is extremely powerful, so it takes very little dye. Now you have to be kind of careful, you don't want to breathe a lot of the dust from this. So we're just going to take, and this is a, a quarter of a teaspoon of dye, and we're going to put it in and stir it around to get all the dye off the end of the measuring spoon. Then we're going to put in the same amount, just a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. We're going to clean that off so we get our orange dye off of our 
measuring device there, a little measuring spoon. I'm going to take a little bit of our salt, and again, just about the same amount, just a quarter of a teaspoon. Put that in. Now we have to bring this up to a boil, and it can be fairly fast. So we're going to turn our heat on to about three quarters of the way, and we're going to let this come to a boil and dissolve our dye. You can see in the dye bath that some of the dye and the salt is not dissolved. We're going to make sure we stir it regularly. And we want to bring this to a full hard boil to make sure all of those dye pigments and the salt dissolve. While our dye is heating up, we can retrieve the rabbit fur that we put in a soaking bath to degrease. And all I did was I had it in this container full of Dawn dishwashing detergent and water. I went to my sink, laid my plastic mesh screen out in my sink. This had my rabbit fur and water in it. You just pour it out, the water all runs through and leaves all of your rabbit fur in the mesh. Then the plastic screen, you can just take it and you can just wring it out. And you can rinse out all of the extra water in your rabbit fur. So you wind up with just a nice water damp fur that's been degreased and we'll set that aside until our bath is ready to dye. As the small amount of water with the salt and dye come to a boil, you'll notice that there is no longer a dark spot in the center where the dye is congregated that hasn't dissolved. It's all dissolved. The bath has a uniform look and you'll notice that it is also very dark. You cannot see, even with a little bit of water, you cannot see the bottom of the pan. So now that it's blended together, we're going to add the rest of our quart of water. We'll give it a quick stir and we're going to reduce the heat down to about one third of the hot plate's potential. Once again, the water is very dark. You can't see down into it at all. Now it's ready for our rabbit. So we're just going to take the damp rabbit that we degreased, put it into the dye bath, and start pressing down on it to make sure it all gets dissolved or all gets absorbed into the dye bath so we don't have uh, a lot that's sitting on the top remaining white. You want it all to be really soaked in well. So now all we have to do is let that simmer for about 20 minutes and we stir it every minute or so. We don't want this to scorch. We don't want it to boil. We just want it to heat up to a simmer. About 200 degrees is ideal. But it now just takes time and making sure that the dye bath is evenly distributed all around the bunny fur to make sure that it's getting a good even dye bath. It's tempting sometimes to pull the material out of the dye bath really quickly thinking it's done, but when you first pull it up, if it's not dyed completely, you can see that as you pull the material up, the color drains out of it. It's still going to be primarily white. As long as there's color in the water, you know that your dye bath hasn't totally absorbed. If you're using too much dye, too great a volume of dye in your bath, you'll get your material really a good solid color and you'll still see a lot of color in the water. When you get it just about right, you'll get good color in your material and your water will be still slightly tinted to orange but almost clear. You'll definitely be able to tell the difference between when we put it in and now that we've stirred it and let it soak into the fiber. All of the dye from the water will attach to the material to dye it and the rest of the dye will be gone out of the water. If you think your dubbing has reached its full potential, gotten the right color, there's an easy way to test it. That's just to take a little bit out, swish it around in a cup of cold water, and this is just to rinse it out and off a little bit, some of the extra dye off, and cool it off a little bit so I don't burn my fingers because that is hot water. Take a paper towel and put the dubbing in there and give it a good squish, get the extra water out. It dries it up enough that you can see if the color is the color you want. And that is a good solid pumpkin orange. Make a nice orange caddis. 
Then you know it's time to add your vinegar. And the vinegar and the little bit of acid in it helps set the dye permanently to the material. So we're going to take our white vinegar and we're going to add a teaspoon. As we pour it in, we're going to stir it around so it gets really blended in all the way into the material. You want it to get in contact with all the fibers and all the pieces of fur to help set that dye into the material. We'll let it simmer just another couple minutes and it'll be finished. And we're ready to dump our material out of the pan and strain it. I just got my container here with my plastic mesh over the top. I'm just going to take the pan and dump it in there. Now you can see there's still a little bit of orange color in the water, but it's fairly transparent. It means all of your dye has absorbed into the material. You're not wasting a lot of dye. We'll squeeze the water out like that. So now we've got a nice wad of Caddis Orange dubbing. The only thing left to do is I'm going to take this and run it through a bath of more Dawn dishwashing soap and warm water to get the remaining dye out of it and also to get some of the vinegar smell out of it or what's left of the vinegar smell. Then I'll take this and just open it up into a flat patch about like that. Set it on some paper towels and let it air dry. And, and if it's normal room temperature around 70 degrees, 24 hours, that will be dry and ready to blend. And I'll show you how to blend dubbing in my next video, the number three in my series, on getting the correct color blend for your insects. So now you've watched the end of the video and you'll get this special tip that everybody else isn't going to get. And the special tip is I've been dyeing things orange or blue or yellow. Now my fingers are orange or blue or yellow. What do I do? Simple solution. Literally simple solution. Any container, half water, half good old Clorox bleach, dip your fingers in it, no more orange. That's it. Have fun. Dye up some good stuff. See you next time.